Ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, the Honorable Ron Villanueva. Joined with me today is a good friend, a dedicated public servant, uh, an outstanding community leader. Her name is Councilperson Rosemary Wilson. Rosemary, thanks for joining us on the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce today. Well, Ron, it's always good to be with you and also to be with friends that are in business. Um, I've been a big proponent for the business community as long as I can remember. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, so I am a lifelong resident of the city. Uh, I, I am a widow. I was married for 38 years, and I have two beautiful daughters who have done really well and four grandchildren. And I really believe in public service. I have a public servant's heart. And I have been on the school board. I was a teacher. And then I've been on the city council. And I have touched so many different aspects of the city. It's it's pretty amazing over my tenure. Uh, and this is a time, Ron, when experience really matters. This is the hardest time I've ever seen us go through. You know, we, we had the darkest day in our history last year with our shooting. And then COVID hit where we businesses are just struggling to, to stay afloat. And we've, we've been really pulling it together. And the city council has been working very hard to save as many as we can. And this is a time when you don't need somebody brand new who doesn't know what they're doing. You need that experience at the wheel and at the tiller to guide us through these dangerous waters. Rosemary, I couldn't agree with you more. I've, I've had the pleasure of uh, working alongside of you and seeing the, some of the initiatives that you've championed. Uh, you're certainly one of the strongest pro-business advocates uh, our city has seen. Uh, you're also the, the development authority liaison could you talk a little bit about some of the programs that the city has implemented with regards to assisting small uh, businesses because of the COVID impacts? And do you see that continuing? Well, <clears throat> we were doing things not just because of COVID. Um, we, we give money to the uh, Chamber for Small Businesses to help them, but we also have a small business department in, 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 our, in our house where we guide people and when you want to start a business to come in and, and start it up. And something else that's very exciting is that we have a Spanish speaking person on staff. So if there's anyone who doesn't speak English and they, they, uh, we have a lot of Spanish speaking uh, members who want to start a business and they can go in there and get the help that they want. And we, we've done a whole lot of things to help this community as well. Uh, <clears throat> I worked with uh, Delegate Glenn Davis and the Commissioner of Revenue to try to help with the business licensing of, uh, of the Hispanic community. And with that and through the General Assembly, new laws have been enacted, so it's going to make it a whole lot easier for this community to start a business. And something else that uh, is, a lot of people don't realize, that I champion a bill through the General Assembly through our friend, you remember Delegate Sally Quinto. I thought about it and I had this idea that the hardest time to get through and survive are the first two years of a brand new business's life. So I've got it so that the first two years, you don't have to pay the B poll tax. And that's a local option. And they were never able to get it through the General Assembly before. But because I was a past president of the Virginia Municipal League, I got them to sort of stand back and say, okay, it's a local option. We're not going to object. And we were able to get that through. And then I was able to get it through our city council because it is a local option. And so now the city of Virginia Beach, if you're a brand new business, you don't have to pay the people tax for two years. Uh, Norfolk has not done that. I believe Chesapeake has. And that's, that's some of the, uh, the initiatives that uh, Council Lady Wilson has promoted all these years. I remember being one of the, the co-patrons of that bill. And a lot of folks don't realize when you're a small business, it's uh, government regulations that can in, uh, throw obstacles your way. It's access to credit. Uh, but Virginia Beach has been one of the, the best uh, uh, cities to do business in, and it's because of uh, council leadership and initiatives like yours. Is, is that program still uh, – implemented and have you seen a, a great success in that program with the b poll tax well yes and, and we see that uh 
more people want to start a business in Virginia Beach because we are business friendly with that. And also we have totally done away with the uh, machinery and tools tax. So that, <clears throat> that tax is not in Virginia Beach. You, you and I had a discussion earlier this summer uh, with regards to the COVID impacts and um, Virginia Beach is a strong uh, hospitality industry town. Uh, you led the initiative, I think, with regards to uh, freezing the meals tax, is that uh, was that really helpful? And do you see that continuing, or uh, where do you see that going? Well, <clears throat> what we did when this hit, and all the restaurants had to close, and all they could do was take out. We said, "What can we do to make sure?" Because the, the restaurants, it's it's a huge industry, and it's, it's, I mean, there are restaurants that you think they're really small they may have 125 employees because there are so many different skill sets there and how can we keep these afloat when they're shut down and so uh i talked to the mayor and our city manager and we did a, a freeze a meal tax holiday so to speak for two months mm -hmm. to get us through through that time and, and to encourage families to save them money to order out because it's it's Gosh, it's six and a half percent, I believe. And then also for uh, the businesses so that more people will buy from them to just let's just get through this time. And then rules were lo loosened. And so they were able to open up, even though they had to have social distancing with phase one and then phase two and then phase three. And then things have gotten a lot better. And I mean, I don't think we were able to save everyone, but we did what we could as a council to try to do, you know, just to save them. Rosemary, we, um, a lot of folks don't realize you're also a champion for historical preservation um, and near and dear to your heart are um, non, a lot of nonprofit organizations. How has the city helped, um, you know, sustain some of our cultural gems in our city? Uh, and uh, where do you see that going? So with the, with the COVID CARES Act money, um, we dedicated millions of it to nonprofits, and to the residents and to the small businesses so that they could keep their lights on, help pay their mortgages or their, their lease payments, their rent payments, and just to be able to survive, to get through some of this. And for a while, none of the museums could be, even be open. And, and so now they are able to, you know, on a limited basis, be able to get, be open and so people can get in. But it was a very, very tough time for especially our, our nonprofits. And, and I look at the a fundraiser that I do for Crush Cancer, um, which in five years we've raised $1.2 million to go to cancer research, which is the only thing that's going to beat cancer. And we weren't able to have our event at all. Um, so the nonprofits have really struggled. And I think sometimes people forget about that because that's kind of like the, the, the last frontier out there of people with their, with their donations. But, but we have really done what we could to because we are a city that cares. We really do. We truly are. And you, you, you certainly care a lot. I mean, your long distinguished career, um, you know, you're a, a long time school board member and a long time council member and, and uh, have shown results with regards to your initiatives. Um, some of the things I'm going down the list of some of the things that uh, you've championed, some, some of the things that are near and dear to my heart, uh, coastal flooding, you know, when I was in the General Assembly, I worked with you and, and many of the, the other folks with regards to coastal flooding. There, there's no doubt um, there's a situation there. It requires funding. You have stepped up. Um, can you talk a little bit about how those initiatives uh, are, are currently implemented? And, um, of course, where do you see the council going with more funding? Well, we have made flooding and sea level rise one of our very top priorities and you can see that when you put money into stuff, you know, you, where your, your uh, heart lies, where your treasure is. And we were at one time, we we're giving 9% uh, of our total budget was going to these things. We increased that. And you'll appreciate this, Ron, because you had to do it. We changed that number from 9% to 23% of our budget. And that's our total budget when you figure half of it goes to education. It's going to stormwater, sea level rise, flooding, and water quality because it's so important to us. We, we, we've got to save homes and, and keep our city afloat. 
Well, you, you certainly could talk to talk and walk to walk. I mean, you, they're, they're, it's incredible some of the things that you accomplished. Um, with regards to like uh, some of the SWAM initiatives, I mean, you and I work together. The city is knows we need to do better with regards to small women and minority businesses. Can you talk a little bit about the implementation plan and what's working so far? Well, first of all, we did a disparity study to find out you know, where we were lacking, what kind of problems that we were having. And so now we have started the implementation, implementation process of it. And this year when the COVID hit, our budget was cut by 60 to $70 million. And one of the things that was on the chopping block was those things that were gonna go for the implementing disparity. And we put that money back in, even though it was recommended by the city manager. Uh, so, so we've done that. And then we also have, are setting up a office just for that. And you, you remember when you were on the council, you had a person to really look at all the contracts. That was a Ronnie V initiative. And so also through uh, the economic development, uh, these businesses get extra help and, 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 and extra attention when they come through. And we, we do give grants through the EDIP department and we're, we're really stepping it up to make things better for the small business. And don't forget what we did for um, the Hispanic community and making things in Spanish so then when they apply for a business license, now the paperwork and all not only is it in English, but it's also in Spanish. Well, <clears throat> the, the Virginia Beach has truly been an international community. Uh, I know you've done a lot of significant work with the, the Filipino community and the Hispanic community, African American. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Uh, going back to budget impacts, we know uh, the budgets are going to be tight. Do you foresee uh, some cuts, some freezes, maybe some fee increases or, or tax increases? I mean, how, how do you balance it all? Well, the last thing we want to do is increase taxes when people have less money. So that's, that's going to be off the table. So what we did this year when the budget came out, we, anything new that was on the table, we just said we're not doing it right now. And then we did, we did a hiring freeze. And that really has helped uh, control our money. And in spite of everything else with the COVID, we said we have got to help our citizens. And so even though our budget was cut and, you know, we had less money, we put eight and a half million dollars of local city money to help our residents, our nonprofits, and our um, uh, small businesses. Again, to we've had a grant program to help them keep their you know with their utilities, helping them with their lease payments and whatever it is, excuse me, that they need. I'm gonna take a little sip of water. Um, that was on top of the CARES money. That was is that a, is that a Red Bull that you just drank? Huh? Is no, it's Bull? not. It is a bubbly. <laughs> it's a bubbly. Um, I've got some off brand. <laughs> looks, looks good. I remember I used to drink a lot of this. Yes, things. you were the Red Bull King. Yeah. But anyway, and then we, the state had cut our school budget mm -hmm. by seven point eight million dollars, and we restored that money to them as well because education is one of our top priorities mm -hmm. and our. Our citizens believe in good schools, and we, we need to make sure we do that. That's our future. I, I remember having served both on local government and, and state government, and um, local government is where, uh, you know, where it all happens. A lot of folks don't realize how important uh, it is to have good leadership at the council levels. I mean, you've seen here in Hampton Roads, other localities and their leadership being fractured somewhat. I mean, could you describe – how city council is working together and maybe you could talk a little bit about that and, and uh, regionalistic efforts with regards to Virginia Beach and the other localities. Well, it's really important for us to work together as a team, Team Virginia Beach. And I would like to say one more thing with about COVID, if you don't mind. Uh, cities in the region, they cut employees, they furloughed employees, and we didn't do that to any of our employees. Everybody was held harmless. Uh, we do a lot of regionalism. People kind of think that maybe we don't. Uh, but I particularly am involved with something called the Broadband Ring because the transatlantic oceanic cables are coming in and they're landing right here in Virginia Beach and they're coming in from Africa, Brazil, Europe. 
and they're bringing in extraordinarily high speed internet. And so rather than letting this pass us by and head up to Northern Virginia, we are creating an off ramp and so that we can harness this high speed internet. And we are working with the other four major cities, Chesapeake, Portsmouth, Suffolk, and um, Norfolk. And we're all working together and I represent the city of Virginia Beach. And this is going to create new jobs and data centers, but it's also going to save the taxpayers money because we'll be able to utilize this internet for our cities and schools and EVMS and, and our responders and all of this sort of thing so that we're not gonna to have to be paying the high bills for the internet service. So it's gonna save us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and then bring in those new jobs. So we are in the design stage of the ring. Um, we're up to 60% and then we're gonna have a better idea of what it's going to cost. And there's some exciting things that um, I can't really talk about yet because um, it hasn't been done, but there are people who uh, really wanna help with this project. So it may be a really good deal for the taxpayers. So Council uh, Lady Wilson, you, you talked about diversification. That's, that's one great example. A lot of folks don't realize how tremendous that initiative is and it's generational. It's a generational uh, strategy there. Do you, is Virginia Beach still pursuing uh, the biotech industry and we're healthcare doing, initiatives? We're doing some, but, but not as much. We're finding that um, we, we created, the good news is we created the space for these different buildings. And now we've had some other opportunities that have come along that we really taken advantage of and we partnered with the state. Um, there's, a, there's a new one that the state put up $750,000 and we provided the land over there and it's for acoustical sheet metal. And it's a, it's a business that's already here, but they were expanding with 200 more new jobs. And so they're, they're gonna be moving over there. And there's some other things that are be coming along, especially with uh, wind power, which is, we are location, location, location on this wind power. It's gonna be a huge boom for our city. Does that, the, the wind power initiative, does that interfere with regards to offshore drilling? And I know you took a stance in support of uh, uh, Virginia Beach industry with regards to opposition of offshore drilling. Does, does that impact the, uh, the, wind, the wind initiatives? No. No, well, we're not going to be doing, I mean, we're hopefully not doing the offshore drill, drilling. Uh, we don't think that's, that's good for our, our city and for our environment. Um, but the wind is very good for the environment and it's really exciting. And we, when I said location, location, we're going to benefit not only what's happening off the coast of Virginia, but also what's happening off the coast of North Carolina. They're building 300 turbines uh, for Kitty Wake. It's called the Kitty Wake Company, and then 200 from Dominion Energy. So that's over 500 turbines that are going to be built off the two coasts. But they're all going to come in through Virginia Beach because we, if you look at the map, you can see how we sort of jut out there. And so that's where all of this is going to come through. Uh, they're already leasing some of our property and buying some of our property. And uh, it's going to be the transport to get materials out there. And this is going to be a really huge project and create lots of jobs. And it's going to be great for our economy. I can see why the viewers uh, see some of the initiatives that you described. They're, they're really strong. Um, can you tell the voters, you know, why you deserve another term? I mean, you're, what, a six-time world champion now on city council? <laughs> and uh, this will be a, a, another term. Um, can you tell the voters why you deserve another term? Well, one thing is I haven't lost my enthusiasm. I have a, I love the city and I love to do good things and to be able to make a difference for people and work hard for people. You know, I don't care if you're Republican, if you're a Democrat, I really like to work hard to do the very best thing that I can. So my enthusiasm is there and I still have some good ideas. My, my ideas are still there. But in this critical time when we don't know what's gonna happen the next day, we've got this COVID, we've got the economic challenges, and we, it's very, very scary. Do you want to leave that to someone who's never served you? They don't have a record, you don't know what they're gonna do. And to be able to make the difficult, informed, tough decisions that we're gonna need going forward, you don't need to be changing horses right now. You need to have someone that you can rely on, that you've been able to rely on. 
and know they've always been there and they've made the good decisions. That's why we have a AAA bond rating. We're the safest city of our size and we have the best schools and we've got the largest volunteer rescue squad in the nation. That saves us tons and tons of dollars as well. You don't want to risk that. We need to keep going and we keep moving forward because we're in this together. Rosemary, you've got, uh, again, uh, some valuable uh, experience on council. Count, uh, City of Virginia Beach has been tremendous with you and others um, as well. If, if folks want to get in touch with you, how, how do they get in touch with you? Well, I, um, I have a, a web page. I have a Facebook page. I'm glad to give you my cell phone. My cell phone number is 757-619-2094. 757-619-2094. It's very public, Southern Real Estate. You can find it any place. <laughs> you, know, um, you can send me an email. And I'm very accessible. So, Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of folks don't realize, you know, politics is a full-time job, but you're balancing a career as well. Um, you know, professionally, do you see the market – uh, real estate market uh, stagnated or growing or and where do you see the Virginia Beach market? Is, it's hot. It's really hot. We um, we have more sales and we have less inventory than we had since we've been keeping the data. And people are the interest rates are low. People are are buying uh, just kind of crazily buying almost. Uh, and it's really good too because it's our one stable uh, income stream for the city. That's 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 right there that we can count on. I can remember my folks in the General Assembly used to say, well, you're lucky you have the real estate taxes to rely on where our, our uh, income can really fluctuate with income tax and sales tax. So real estate is doing great. It's a great time to buy and sell. I remember uh, one of the initiatives that you championed was affordable housing. I mean, you talk about prices right now, I guess it's a, a seller's market. Uh, do you see the affordable housing initiative being squeezed out a little bit? And how do you well, balance that? It is a seller's market. Um, I do know that there are some people like my good friend, Helen Dragas. She's building some um, condos over off of Princess Anne. Uh, and I call them affordable home ownership because they are going to be like the hundred eighty dollars to $200,000 range. And when you start figuring out what the interest rates are, you're – your payments are going to be pretty inexpensive as compared mm -hmm. to renting in a lot of places. And then you also get tax write-offs and, and you also, after so many years, you have something to show for it. Whereas with rentals, you have really nothing to show for it, but you just walk away and say, I enjoyed living there. Uh, but I did start the housing advisory board. Um, one thing that we know with economic development, if we do not create this workforce housing and have it available for businesses, they're not going to come here. It is tied very, very closely to economic development because people have to have a place to live that they can afford. And I used to have a slogan that said, if you, can, if you work here, you should be able to afford to live here. I totally agree with you, Rose. Um, let's, I'm going to bring up a, a couple of topics, you know, you know, maybe you can give a buzzword or two where the status is at, uh, you know, the Norfolk Southern right away. What, what are we doing with that? Well, that's to be determined, but I do know for sure we own it now. Um, we had to pay the state back the $20 million that they loaned us when the referendum failed, but now it's ours. And I think it's like a, the backbone of the city. It's, the spine, the backbone, and it's really great that we do have it with, because we don't exactly know where transportation is going to go. You know, we're hearing about the driverless cars, and then there's bus rapid transit. There's a whole lot of different opportunities out there, and so I think we just sort of need to, to watch for the emerging uh, industries to come out and see what's going on, but we have it for the future, which all good cities need to plan for the future, not just for today. I totally agree. Totally agree. I remember being chairman of transportation and working with you guys on that. And people don't realize that that was an important corridor that we needed to maintain and control. Um, Rudy Loop, I saw that you on your website, you have a survey. How's that going? Well, um, 
you know, we've been buying up that property and I think it's probably the most spectacular vacant property on the East Coast. But every one, every good city has to have good open space. And I feel like that that space belongs to the people and the citizens of Virginia Beach. And it makes all the other property around them more valuable. And there's going to be more development that's going in on, on the other side of Pacific Avenue. Um, so that there's going to be plenty of development down there. But it's so heavily used by our surfers and our fishermen and the children. And it could be something really spectacular um, as, as a park. And it's a park for the people. We do need some more parking. Um, but I, I, think it's, I think this is a park for the people. I remember the initiative that you took with regards to Pleasure House Point, same thing. Uh, open, open space preservation is, you know, we got some cultural gems in our city and that's, that was one of them. Can you imagine the thousands of houses that could have been built there and that's where it was headed? Uh, my, my husband was with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and they said, you know, we, would, we have a place up in Annapolis and we'd really like to have a place here at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay and uh, they approached me and then I took it to our good friend, Lewis Jones, because it's in his district. And then we took it to the mayor and then it spun off from there that we were able to get the money raised with um, uh, Fish and Wildlife and the uh, Land Trust. And of course the Chesapeake Bay Foundation had some money too, to preserve that land. And the people over there, they really do love it. And I think they're gonna feel the same with that Ruby Blue. We we saw over the last couple of years, uh, Pharrell coming back to Virginia Beach and investing more um, and using his 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 network. But uh, the city's really stepped up with regards to something in the water. How, how has that helped transform Virginia Beach? Uh, and where do you see that going? Well, we're hoping it's going to come back because you know with COVID, we had had to be canceled, which was very sad. But it was a transformational event. And it, we got a lot of publicity across the country and people came here and there was excitement and it was just absolutely a wonderful thing. And it's obvious that Pharrell loves his hometown, but without Rudy Loop, there would be no place to lay down all of the things that they need to set up a, a big concert like that. You've got to have space to get the lay down of everything. So if you've got all this development, you're not going to be able to have, place to be able to do those. And, and we do other uh, big concerts down there. We do the Patriotic Festival, which actually brought in as many people as something in the water, which most people don't realize. People did not know that. And Patriotic Festival was, Patriotic Festival. was a tremendous event. Mm -hmm. And then there's the American Music Festival on Labor Day and all that it brings in. And, and these are a lot of things that really adds to our tax base. Ron, you know, most people do not realize that tourism saves them at least 10 to 11 cents on their real estate tax. If we didn't have that, they would be paying a lot more in taxes. And that's after we, we put some money aside for, uh, for advertising and the investment fund to keep things moving and going. And after that, the, uh, the money that's saved goes to say, it brings down your taxes. It's huge. Well, I mean, we, Rose, you and I could go on and on. I mean, I just love talking to you and some of the initiatives and just being back and, and seeing some, some of the leadership that you've shown. We um, love seeing you back, Ron. Thank you. Is, is there anything you want to tell the voters or, and our constituents again, um, some, some of the initiatives that we didn't talk about and we, we could wrap this up? And um, again, you, you've shown tremendous leadership. Well, I, I think this is... Um kind of a scary time in our history. You know, there's a lot of uh, social unrest. And I think that there's a feeling that what happens in Washington is going to spill over to what's happening here. And I don't think it should do that. I think we have a great city. Uh, it's been well run. You really need to look at what's best for moving forward. It touches you more than anything else. Uh, I'd like to continue serving. I, I think we need the stability. Do you know on our council of 11, at least five people have been there less than a term? And you, you need some of the people like myself and Lewis Jones and Jim Wood to, 
to really help keep us steered in the right direction. And the other thing is we, we have a brand new city manager too, on top of everything else that he came July 20th. And you have a new police chief as well. We have a new police chief that we haven't even met yet. So with all of these changes, you got to be careful and not have too many changes because we need the stability right now. That's so important. So uh, yeah, I, I really bring that to the table. And the, Coastal, the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce is honored to have you today. Um, you've uh, been a long time public servant. You are uh, running for reelection for the at-large district. Uh, we encourage everyone to go out and vote. Uh, this, this interview hopefully shows your, uh, a lot of your initiatives and explains uh, why it's important to have experience at the helm. Rosemary, thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you and thank your family. You. Give a hug to everyone for me. Thank you, and I'm so glad your family has you back. We love you, Ron. Love you too. Take care. Bye.